by booktube i'm still ross and this is still my channel a journey through books well after about a three week hiatus of not making videos i'm glad to say that my exam papers are set i will find out tomorrow if there's any changes that need to be made but up until then tonight i am free and i'm using the time to make a video so i thought it would be a good idea to do a reading wrap up so the first book that i read well we're just working it in order here so this is musim amane um Prophet or Puppet um, by um, Setembiso Msomi. Now, um, Msomi is a writer for the Sunday Times, one of the editors, I believe. And um, Musi Mamani is one of the leaders of the opposition parties to the current leading party in South Africa. And I thought I'd read this because, well, today was actually election day, which is why we didn't go to work, um, to see what I thought of this. Um, it's very slim, which is already a bit problematic, let's be honest. There isn't really all that much to say. And it's not that Musomi didn't try. Um, I even know that uh, Musim Amane has had Dr. Kumalo stuck on his school books. But let's be honest, that's not really the kind of information that I'm interested in when looking at who I should vote for. Um, the child you are does not generally represent the adult you are going to be, nor your political views. It shows that you were a child. Um, I will say that um, Somi does try to be very fair. He raises the question, the main question um, regarding Musim Amane is whether he actually is the leader of this party or whether he is a puppet to the white people who um, used to lead this party. And he looks at that question and he raises other questions or he addresses other questions that people raise regarding him. Um, and in that regard, it was interesting. The last third, however, was more speculation than fact. And for a skinny book already, that tells you how very little fact there was. Um, but the problem with that being is that this book was published in 2016 before the municipal elections. So he was trying to predict stuff that I knew that happened three years ago and in some regards he was kind of a bit accurate in other regards he wasn't but other things have happened that nobody could have foreseen so in that regard the last third is a little bit redundant but anyway it was an interesting read I can't say that I felt found it excessively informative for my purposes perhaps some people would find it informative but I was expecting a little bit more, a little bit more of an insight into his politics. I mean, I know more about um, Pete Buttigieg's ideas on politics and running than I do about him. And let's be honest, he's been around for a lot longer on my radar, at least. Moving on. So the next book that I read was around my birthday because I bought it for my birthday. And that was Red Dragon by um, Thomas Harris. I had to try and just remember which Harris it was there. I've been reading a lot of Harris's of late. And um, so I got this because this is the book that Steve used when he did his how to do a book review video. And he got me interested. And I've been kind of curious because I've never read Silence of the Lambs or you know, Hannibal Rising or any of those books. Um, and I thought, well, this one is the first. Let's give it a go. So a quick synopsis. Um, in Red Dragon... This is actually set after Hannibal Lecter has been caught, even though it is written before Hannibal Lecter was written. How's that for confusion? Um, and you're dealing with the, the, the FBI agent who has retired since Hannibal Lecter, and they bring him back for the Red Dragon, the Tooth Fairy, whichever name you chose, Pilgrim. And um, so you've got him trying to, well, work out who this guy could be before the next full moon when he's going to now commit another serial killing. Um, he gets into homes, etc. and whatnot. And it's basically that. I mean, there, there's not much more to say <laughs> without giving stuff away. So that's pretty much the synopsis of this. Look, it wasn't bad. It, it's got what you want if you're wanting a crime thriller. I mean, you've got your really sick and twisted psychopath. You've got your injured and damaged FBI profiler, many mutilated families, or at least two, and, you know, one major bad pinball. 
and uh, so it, it made for an interesting read. Um, the ending was unusual. I'm still not 100% sure whether I liked it or not, or whether I bought it or not, because I guessed that what appeared to be was not because you know there are things that would have had to have happened because things had been addressed earlier in the book you know but um, I don't want to give anything away but you know they say you don't mention a gun in the opening of a book unless the gun's going to go off so the fact that certain things had happened earlier on meant that other things had to happen later and I was right so I didn't buy the the first part of the ending but yeah it, it was interesting um I like that he doesn't spell everything out for you. I, I really get tired of writers who really feel that, you know, we're all intellectually impaired and need to have everything spelled out, whereas he didn't, so I like that. The one thing that kind of didn't sell it for me is that Will Graham in this was supposed to be such an amazing profiler, so good at what he does, and yet the, 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 the clue that they needed to find out who this guy actually was, you know... Any beat cop could have thought of that. <laughs> Just saying. That's, so, I, I, I mean, earlier they, they convinced you he was good, but that was a bit of a letdown. You know, was, if anybody could have done it, then why get in the big guns? But anyway, so that was my thoughts on this. But I, I can't say I felt good. I don't think you're supposed to feel good after reading a book like this. I felt a bit squicky. Moving on. <laughs> so, okay, this is like a massive, this is not what the entire thing, this is my complete works of Shakespeare, and I'm just holding it up for the sake of holding up a book here, so that I remember to mention this one. So I read Cymbeline, and I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm going to put this down now, because I've remembered to mention Cymbeline. So the Cymbeline has like the best of Romeo and Juliet. In fact, there were great similarities to Romeo and Juliet, but without all the stuff that I hate, and apologies to all the Shakespeare fanatics out there and those that really love it to bits and pieces. When you've taught the same Shakespeare play for 10 years and you're there, you, you, it can start getting annoying. I think even my favorite would start getting annoying after 10 years. And whiny Romeo is not my favorite. And let's face it, Romeo and Juliet, they make so many stupid mistakes. But in Cymbeline, they don't. And it had... Um, it had so a very obvious Romeo and Juliet feel to it because there's even the potion that makes it look like you're dead and they get married even though you know nobody would have proved of it and instead of keeping it a secret they tell everyone you know so he gets banished also similar to Romeo and Juliet except he didn't kill her cousin and whatnot so you have this really involved story and then it's also got touches of as you like it in because Imogen ends up disguising herself as a guy and I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed it. And um, Cloten, he is the guy that she was supposed to have married. And um, he, is a, he is thick and he is arrogant and whatnot. And th there are a couple of scenes where you have him walking on stage and you've got two lords with him. And the one is agreeing with everything he's saying. And the lord number two is just doing asides to the audience, adding his two cents worth. I love that. And when Imogen gives him a piece of her mind, I was there rooting for her all the way. It's so nice to read Shakespeare when I'm not having to write it for an exam for myself or teach it for kids to write it. As an exam, I could actually just relax and pretend I was one of the peasants back in Shakespeare's day and appreciate it for what I felt like getting out of it, which was true fun. And then the last book that I'm going to talk about, I am keeping this all short, sweet, and to the point, is The Travelling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. And I heard about this book from Mel at Mel's Bookland Adventures, and she assured me the cat doesn't die in the end because that was the only thing that was important for me to pick this book up. And so I read this book. It is gorgeous. I read it to my cat out loud. So I would recommend this book to cat lovers. Sorry, Steve. Maybe you should give it a skip. But so much of this is narrated by the cat. And he's a typical cat. He's got that superior, arrogant attitude. And But he is so loyal to his, um, his owner. Oh, and the yeah, other. I would recommend this book to cat lovers who own tissues, because the ending's sad, <laughs> but obviously it's going to be sad. So basically this book is about a Japanese guy who has adopted the stray cat, 
and Nana. And he, after five years of having Nana, is now looking for another home for Nana. And it's the road trip, or the many road trips that these two go on to go and see about a new home for him. And it is gorgeous, it is heartbreaking, it is beautiful, it is funny. It's everything. Bring your tissues. So that's pretty much been my reading the last three weeks, I think. It's a bit depressing. Um, I'm going to have to pick up speed again in the next school holidays but first we've got to get through exams <laughs> and I don't even want to think about the marking but I'm not here today to sort of whinge about the amount of schoolwork that I've got to do because today is my day off and I'm pretending I don't have a job I am relaxing so that is me for now hope I get to see you again soon um, I don't think there will be a video this week because marking <laughs> <laughs> but I will put up a video as soon as I've got something to talk about or maybe I will put up one of well I pre-filmed a, a book tag ages ago during the holidays and then I forgot about it so I might put that up just to remind you that I exist bye for now happy reading